Hello, bookworms and howlers. We are back once again, guys, to talk a little Red Rising. We're going to be finishing up the original trilogy night with Morningstar. Joining me as always, you know her as the sovereign, Erin Aloon. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. Hello. <laughs> I'm the gold, I forgot. <laughs> and of course, uh, he is the goblin with a heart of gold. He is Ben Albarca. How are you this evening? Doing wonderful. You were wonderful. And I think I just want to be in house Telemannus so I can shout Telemannus a lot. So that's, that's yeah. kind of it's kind of where I'm sitting at. So uh, easy if I, to remember. If I recall correctly, you guys were current and you had to wait between Golden Sun and Morningstar. That yes. is correct. How did you do that? I mean, who did you have to kill to, to make <laughs> it through that? Because well, it's Ben's fault that I was reading it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I was just taking her down with me. I needed someone else to like be in the same spot that I was. Yeah. So. I just I can't imagine with the way that the way that Golden Sun ended. I, I just I just don't know necessarily that I could have. I, I mean, I guess I would have had to, you know. And I, it's not like it's this this wait between uh you know Dark Age and, and Lightbringer has been easy. I mean, it's been what this was only a year, you know. This that's it's been right. what, four years for that, but it's just it was like I I I'm so glad that I had didn't have to wait because I said I was doing one a month at the time. But when I finished Golden Sun, I was like, "F that!" And I just, <laughs> just picked just up. Right I just picked up Morningstar immediately. So I'm hey, glad Mike. you guys. Sorry, did we have the comments turned on this time? I do have the comments turned oh, on. Look, look, why look. can't I see them? Hey. Oh, oh hey, see? thank no, you. Hey, you, you mess up one. You mess up <laughs> one time. Sure. We got one it. time. No, no, I got you guys. I got you guys. Sorry, that's <laughs> why I was raising my hand. So before we get into it, I guess just your overall feelings about Morningstar. Where would you rank it? Did it meet your expectations? All those fun things. Who wants to go first? Me. It was my favorite. <laughs> it remains my favorite. Of all five, or just the first three? I love uh, marriage. And a baby and a happy ending, and I got <laughs> I got them all. That's not surprising. <laughs> and not a baby that then <laughs> proceeded to be murdered. <laughs> Yet he's still alive. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> and that's nothing, guys. You're safe if you if you've only read these first three. You're safe. We're not going to talk about the sequels. Don't worry. You're good. You're safe. Uh, for me, I feel like every time I read it, uh, I'm like, wow that's better than I remember it being. And I, I always go back to it and just being like, that is a really, really darn good book. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's always like, I should, I should like this book uh, or rank it higher than I do in the series. I feel like every time I read it. I, I forgot to mention space battles. Yeah. Killing bad guys that we <laughs> hate. Badass uh, razor fighting. So... I think I'm with Albert here. I still, I still go Golden Sun just because I'm an Empire Strikes Back guy. You know, I, I like, I like the, I like the bad guys uh, winning a little bit. I think and this <laughs> one, I think, does have a, a little bit more of a happy ending. But I, I think this book is just so f just packed full of stuff. Like I was going through the notes and I was like, we can't talk about everything because we'd be yeah, here for you know, five hours. This book is just amazing how much is packed into this book. You know, the the, the four parts of it, and I guess that means we should just uh, go ahead and get right into it. Uh, part one is called Thorns, and it's just real cheery. You know, it just starts <laughs> off with Darrow in a box so underneath Darius' <laughs> dinner table. Uh, it's I, I I'm not claustrophobic, but I was claustrophobic on this reread with this part. This is just this is just horrifying stuff. Yeah, I would I would have I don't know I would have taken the deal. <laughs> <laughs> He does. He does like him a little bit. Doesn't he say that Darrow actually like Darrow gives up his family? You know, I mean, yeah. thankfully we find out later that you know that they got them out of there before that he could find them. But you know, he lets them believe that he found the family and he's torturing them and all that stuff. This is just a, I mean, with the way the book two ended, obviously you don't think it's going to start off you know awesome, but it's man, it's just it's awful here to kick things off. And you know, you're like, hey, I'm back in this universe. Pierce is making me feel like shit already. Yeah, Are great. you claustrophobic? It really will show you. It just shows you the depths. Oh yeah, definitely. I cannot handle that. Um, I would be slamming my head into the wall just like Darrow for sure. Uh, <laughs> it just shows you the depths and like the terribleness that the Jackal is capable of. And like kind of almost sets up the end of the book and like how sick he, and terrible he is and like how far he's willing to go. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's, um, just a little peek into his terrible dark soul. Um, and then we see at the end that he's willing to just like commit genocide to, uh, uh, have power. So it's, it's, uh, a great first setup for him. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Idris is, he's a, he's one sick puppy. 
I think yeah. is the word I'd use. And the thing is, like, it's not like there's any love loss between Cassius and Darrow. And even Cassius is like stunned by, oh my God, like what right. shape yeah. is when he sees Even um, the, all the bad guys are like, this is disgusting. <laughs> this is a little Like, why far. don't you just kill him? Yeah. <laughs> why are you the way that you are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Albert says it's quite an out of the box punishment. Well done. You better pace yourself, Albert. Pace yourself here. Uh, I, I mean, Cassius, I mean, obviously, knowing what we know now, but like at this point, I'm just like, wow, man, even Cassius thinks you're, you're messed up. And he's like, he's given Darrow like his cloak to cover himself up and stuff. It's just, I don't know. I never really hated Cassius, this whole, this whole trilogy, even though I know you're supposed to hate him. You're supposed to hate Rogue. I never did just because I thought they were such well done characters. And I'm looking back at it. I'm like, would you really have done anything differently if you were in their position? You know I mean? Hey, this right. guy cut my arm off last book. <laughs> you know, yeah. why am I, why do I care? I, yeah, Are you saying you don't? Me. You don't hate Rogue? Is that what I heard? <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get to part three. But, uh, Do I hear I mean, a sympathizer? Look, it's, 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 it's like that thing where, you know, hey, your friend might be a little bit of a space racist. You just pretend that you don't know that stuff. And, you know, you... <laughs> We're going to have to. Bye, sorry. <laughs> so uh, I, we get the introduction to Holiday and Trig. And I mean, we know Trig for five minutes before Pierce does what Pierce does. But I think it's really cool because to me, I was just like, I wanted to see some something other than just reds and golds. And we finally get to see some grays here. And so I like this group uh, right away. And it just, it sucks that, you know, Audrey just murders the shit out of them as soon as I was starting to really like them. Yes. Yeah. We uh, talked about this a lot on our podcast. We feel like this was just like a perfect like movie opening, like this little like breakout jail sequence. You get these two like really lovable characters right up front that you meet. And then um, there's that little twist where we think they're, you know, actual guards and then they're not. And then they're like, we're here to break you out. And it just goes from there. And it's Top just of the so, mountain. so, so fantastic. Like I just love that style of writing and, and how uh, Pierce did that. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the um, April fool's posts on the Facebook group? And it was someone posted all the like one star reviews of the, of the books. And one of the one star reviews was like, not enough action. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You know, what surprised me about this movie uh, is there is a, a mention of Ephraim in this chapter. Yeah. You know, I didn't remember that the first time. I mean, obviously, why would why would I have been paying attention to that the first time? But that's something that, guys, you know, just keep that name in mind. It, sad, it might come up later. Sad boy, F. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I think that this, this whole scene is just awesome. First, I'm like, okay, Victor's alive. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Jero just killed the shit out of Vixus, which he deserved. I mean, look. They had tied you up and they were walking out. You just had to get that one last one liner in, and you know what? <laughs> cost you everything. So next time, I have time, to say yes. that the box was not as horrifying to me as the long toenails and him like stomping on his toe. That, oh yeah, that, like, <laughs> yeah. that is horrifying. I hate. That's worse than the box. Yeah, with the boots. Yeah, that whole, that whole scene is like, man, look, I'm not real like queasy about torture. I read a lot of grim, dark fantasy and stuff, and it's like, yeah, it, it happened. But yeah, these these chapters are just like, man, Pierce, who hurts you, dude? Where are you where are you where are you getting this from? Where are you pulling this out of? And the thing is, is like knowing what's on the horizon, guys. This ain't nothing. I'll just, I'll yeah. just put it there. But uh, yeah, uh, this whole up. jailbreak sequence is great. You know, they find Victra, and she's pretty much like feral, which you know isn't. Let's be honest, not that far off from a regular personality. But you know what? I'm just happy because I thought she was dead when I finished Golden Sun. Right. I was, I was really mad about that. So for once, I'm like happy, you know, that someone didn't die in one of these books because it's a character that I, that, that I like a lot. So uh, it basically, it does get Trey killed, though. You know, honestly, if you think about it, because Darrow makes oh, yeah. him, he's not going to leave without her kind of thing, which I respect. I respect. Yes. I just because I love Victor because, you know, you think about it in the whole time. Victor was the only one who like undeniably was on his side. It felt like the whole time. That's why I've always been Darrow should have chose Victra, you know, but we'll get into that probably a lot in this, this book talking about it. And I know, I know, that, <laughs> I know that you guys like the way that it ended up, but I feel like, Hey, this war would have been won in five minutes. If these two had just got, do you not love several Victra though? I do, but it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, this is this is where you've got one foot in sci-fi and one foot in fantasy because Severo is never gonna nab a victory in real life. Let's be real here. I mean, this guy, this guy, this guy like brags about not taking a bath. Okay, I doubt very seriously he's he's gonna get with Victra. But you know what? It's one of those things where you're always like, man, how did that guy get that girl? And she says he makes me laugh. That's that's got to be what yeah. it is here. I think. You I know? think it's in the bedroom, Mike. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So where are we here? So this prison break, uh, I think this is just one of those instances where it's like, does anyone write just crazy, just chaos and action the way that Pierce does, where it's just like, holy shit, what is going on right now? Like just everywhere they're falling, then the claw drills and all that stuff. And, and Ragnar catches up. It's just, this is just awesome stuff. It's like so cinematic. I love it. I love the EMP part too. When they walk, yeah. walk out Dude. the elevator. That's the noise it makes. That's so fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm always down for a jailbreak, but this was yeah. just like, man, gosh. So if you, you're going to tell me that these books don't have enough action. I'm just like, man, the first like 50 pages of this are just like, you know, okay, so we had torture. We had uh, new characters that we quickly become endeared to getting one of them getting murdered, uh, yeah. it, building up our villain a little more, making one of our other villains a little sympathetic and like a crazy jailbreak sequence. I mean, this, these books have everything. Man. And crazy. claw drills. Claude Rose. Yes. Yeah. And it just Which, shows I think like, it's foreshadowing for something that happens later in this right. book. I think know? it might be. Yeah, it might be. I mean, I might have finished the book before we had this conversation. I think we talked about this last time, just like how great Pierce is at writing these interloping characters. And then he just gives you all this characterization right away. And like Trig, Trig and Holiday, I feel like you just understood both of them right away. And you could latch on to them. So it's like Trig dying actually means something right away in this book. And he was yeah. only there for a little bit. It's just. That's just crazy good writing. It's, it's very impressive. So apparently Victor loves the stink. That's, that's <laughs> the secret guy. She's, she's, she's down with that action. But uh, yeah, there is a lot of, there is a lot of uh, other people. Yeah. See, I mean, I mean, hardly, hardly anybody agrees with me on this one. I just, I, it's just, you know, right, you, got two, you got the two mega powers. The mega power should have, you know, just teamed up and got this done. I'm just, I'm just saying, but uh, I think, uh, what is this? This part ends with the, um, we learned that Adrius faked Darrow's death. And so in yeah. response, Severo decided to leak the video of the carving. Uh, I don't really know that that's the method I would have used, but okay. Oh, uh, cool. That's just, that's a Severo kind of thing, which is something I think we learned a lot in this book. We see that Severo, yeah. he's a great number two. I don't know if he's really the guy right that's eating this outfit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I, I guess I understood that. I liked that it. it did kind of clarify that Severo was like the only person who never gave up and believing that he was alive. Yeah. So, so it was that. So yeah, yeah it's right. like a double, there's like two parts to it. Like he's the only person that would not give up and that what's that is something that makes him great, but at the same time he's like running the whole rising into the ground. So uh that's something that's kind of takes away from him. So as a leader anyway. So yeah, he's just I don't think he's cut out for leadership. He's probably just too emotional as as a He's doing okay though. He's Movement leader. keeping a lot of people alive underground and yeah, yeah. You know, he's doing the best he can. Mm. I love this. This right here could be like a, the best blurb on the front of one of the books. I just love all the action going on and the twist. Like we're over here, mm -hmm. ha ha. We're here, else somewhere. Bam, bam, bam. Kill shot. <laughs> that would be exactly. The best blurb ever. Exactly. Yeah, you nailed it. You like nailed on it. the front of the book, <laughs> <laughs> a quote. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, so part two is called Rage. Uh, Mickey's back, and he fixes up uh, uh, a Darrow, and he, he helps Victra to walk again. So God bless him. The guy is a magician, right? And that, some tells me he'll he'll have plenty more work to do before this 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 series is done. Um, I, I think the initiation into the Howlers yeah. might be one of the grossest things I've. I mean, I've been <laughs> part of some really nasty initiation. What do you mean you haven't done it yet? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> eight cockroaches and none of that stuff. Um, and like, I don't know. There was so much vomiting in that section. I'm just like, <laughs> you can tell me about pulling someone's entrails out and wrapping them around a tree. Doesn't bother me, but you're just talking about this much vomiting and eating cockroaches and spiders. It's no, nice, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. So this was where holiday was so impressive. I feel like, yeah, <laughs> I do like that uh, what, when he starts cussing and, and Ragnar's all like, seriously, like, do not profane this moment. Yeah. <laughs> Ragnar's just like so stoic and so serious, even when they're just trying to have a good time. And and, and we'll get to Ragnar, I, I think. But uh, yeah, this is like the, at the peak of me loving Ragnar right here. Mm. Just like, this guy's the best. Oh, love. all those chapters in the opening where they're in Tino's. They have like, a trio. Yeah. And it's Rag, Rags, Darrow, and Severo together. But then like, he like he like just like incredible. throws them. He just like yeah. throws them for a peanut bar. <laughs> yeah, the peanut bar. Yeah. Don't eat my Christmas. candy. I'm a terrorist warlord. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 messed up stuff. But I, I do respect that Darrow is like, okay, look, hey, you saved me. This is your outfit now. I'm not gonna come in here dick swinging. This is your group. I'm gonna follow your lead. 
Now, we know it doesn't last long. Uh, and we see that, again, like I said, Severo, great number two. He's the best boy. He is the He's your wingman that you want, for sure, without a doubt. Maybe he didn't get the leadership gene from his father. You know, yeah. maybe a little bit of that, I think. And I, I think it's 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 played out well to where Darrow still, like, hangs back, hangs back until finally everyone's just, like, looking at Darrow to make a decision when they go to Phobos here. And I think when Severo cuts out Darrow's comms later on is when I was like, hmm. Man, that's that's a that's a choice. That's a choice. A yeah. little bit. I, I feel like this needed to happen. This needed to happen. And don't forget, we meet Ralph. <laughs> I'm Bobo. Ralph, he's, he's Ralph. the mustache. Ralph. That's not Ralph. That's, that's not Ralph. No. Shit, who's Ralph? <laughs> <laughs> where he gets the goatee? Is oh, that the what goatee. You're about? Yeah. Yeah, that's Rollo. I think. Oh, right? Okay. Rollo? Victor, like, yeah. oh, okay. I was about to say, yeah. is there a Ralph in this book? There is like, a Ralph. What the He's hell? The like, you know, Greek oh. god yeah, names yeah. and shit. I never remember anybody named oh, Ralph. Oh, Ralph is with Harmony. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I like to remember these, like, random characters that immediately you never hear from again. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, they stumble upon a meeting that's going on uh, what, with Quicksilver, who they actually came to see. Mm -hmm. and Mateo popped back up, by the way. I was like, wow, yes. what the yes. hell is he doing here? Uh, Quicksilver, Cassius, Virginia, the Telemonises, like the whole gang's here. And uh, Darrow tries to de-escalate it. Like I said, Severo cuts his comms off. Yeah. And then fire fight, and it's the chaos again <laughs> that bang, we bang, love. Bang. That yeah, bang, 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 shoot, kill, fantastic. headshot. Yeah. yeah. The gravity and Ragnar grabbing it. I mean, that's like amazing. <laughs> yeah. If Ragnar wasn't there, everyone would be dead. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it more times than one. And I think it's something that I, I do love is that people say, oh, these you don't take it seriously. The physics don't make sense, stuff like that. Who says I that? I think I'm really, hell even Pierce said that. Even Pierce <laughs> in one of his in one of his, his at the signing I went it's to fiction. was saying that like he thought it was really he was he, he was talking to NASA, uh getting consulting and stuff like that. And he said NASA thought it was nice that he tries <laughs> 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 with his realism of space. So I, I thought that this scene was really cool because it showed Space is scary and it doesn't fuck around. It doesn't care right. who you are. You know, yes. space is Makes always. Makes your tongue gonna... swell up. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> that's it, that's just, that's a great scene. And again, oh, so. I don't know if Pierce almost suffocated or or, or something because he's writing claustrophobia and, and drowning and, and suffocating and being squished in tiny areas. He's writing it so good in this book. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like there's some kind of trauma he's working out on the page here. I feel like. <laughs> you know, maybe Blair trapped him in a closet when he was. A kid. <laughs> So uh, after the firefight, uh, Virginia, I mean, she pretty much beats Darrow's ass here. But I mean, I, I don't think he's really fighting back. Obviously, no, he doesn't want to hurt no. her. And, and she sees it's him. And uh, I, I don't, I, I mean, I guess I clearly she didn't think he was still alive. It does shock her a little bit. She said that uh, what uh, Orion's still alive, still has the packs. And then she just like leaves. And, you know, I'm glad they didn't kill the Telemonises. That was pretty cool. You know, yeah, know what right. they're doing now, but at the time, I'm like, what are all these people doing here together? You know, right. that was when I was like, what is going on? Why is, why is she in the room with Cassius? I think later she says like, oh, it was the only option forward if you know if you were dead and things like that. But and that shows I'm that still not, skeptical. Not only Severo, but Mustang. Everyone's like failing without Darrow there. They need their figurehead. They need the glue guy, the glue that holds them all together. <laughs> yes. That was going on. But I mean, I'm full. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. But a big part of this, I'm still like skeptical a little bit of Virginia. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, we never really got that resolution at the end of book two where she had him at gunpoint and she left. That didn't mean she was okay with it, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I was still a little bit maybe I just got hurt so bad in the last book that I just was <laughs> full on and don't trust anybody besides Severo mode. Right? Yeah. And Ragnar. I'm trying to remember how I felt like back when I read this for the first time. Now I've read it through so many rereads, like it's hard to remember. But I don't. I never had like I, I didn't trust Mustang. I, I know that that's like there's a vein of that in the threat in the fandom for sure. Um, but I never felt that way after the first book where she like gave up the jackal. I thought that she was in for the cause pretty much, or was going to be eventually. You know. Yeah. Um, so this was like it was interesting though to walk in on this room and see what was happening and you're like hmm i don't know uh i don't where know that was I, still felt, yeah. I felt like look yeah. how quick look how quick wrote flip sides you right. know so i was right. like i don't know maybe you know you know who her dad is you know and family first you know that that's that's what i was kind of worried about hey mm -hmm. it's a good question uh hal wants to know when is someone going to bring this to the screen i'd love to see a few seasons with 10 to 15 episodes i'll tell you that when i saw him at the signing he said there'd be new soon it's been four years. He always says, he <laughs> yeah. always says He did say that for a long time. Yeah. 
I believe that he's just not going to let it go to someone who's going to do it wrong. That's why I feel like he's sticking to yeah. it. He'd rather just have it not made and be made, you know, not no. faithfully. That's what Last I believe. update we heard was in December and mm -hmm. it's with a big streamer and they're reworking it is what we heard. Yeah. Please don't be Amazon. That's <laughs> I've just seen what they did to Lord of the Rings and Wheel of Time. Please don't be Amazon. Uh, I would love it if it was HBO. I, I would love that. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I, it's one of those things where I've got to the point now with adaptation where I used to like beg for the stuff to get made. Now I'm like, please don't, please don't do it, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I don't have a lot of faith in it. But I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like he wouldn't like he sold the rights the first time, obviously, because he was just getting started. He probably needed the paycheck. You know, let's mm -hmm. be honest. And once that wore out, it seemed like he's being very protective of it, which makes me happy because I'm hoping that just means he isn't just like, eh, you can do whatever you want to do with it. He probably wants to be involved, I would imagine. But when I saw yeah, him, he, said he, wanted, he wanted to add stuff. He wanted to add stuff like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Golden Sun, we it's been two years. He wants to like add stuff like at the Academy and stuff like that. So, yeah, sign me up for all that, for all that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, when we when he talked about it last time, he said he was getting a lot of inspiration from Andor, so I thought that was great to hear. Yeah, uh, that's 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 possible. Uh, even trying to do this animated instead of uh instead of you know live action. I don't know. I just think this. I think this will be rather easy to do with live action. Somewhat mm -hmm. easier than something like Brandon Sanders and stuff that people want made live action. I'm like, yeah, but fairies floating around and shit. All right. Anyhow, <laughs> we're really really derailing, but uh, I felt like we should we should probably uh, uh, touch on that. So uh, obviously. After this, uh, Severo and Darrow decide to, you know, slug it out, do what bros do, have their little fight, and then, you know, then they're super tight again. And, you know, I respect that. I respect that. It is a really touching scene, I think. Yeah, this was one of our all-time favorite scenes, I feel mm -hmm. like. It's very uh, brotherly. Yeah. To beat each other up and then hug it out. I mean, Ben Teller, that's what that's what dudes do. We get mad, exactly. we punch each other, and then we're like, Ben has a sister, and I have a brother. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, and then we're like this. We're like yeah, this after that. Yeah, exactly. You know? Gain respect at that point. So, it's yeah, got to be hard. It's got to be hard yeah. for Severo who's got a taste of what it's like to be the leader. And, you know, that's, he knows as soon as Darrow's back, well, you know, he's probably the better choice. But, you know, it's got to be hard to let go of, I imagine. Yeah. I like it as a mirror to the scene in the previous book where Darrow admits that he – you know, is a red and, and several knows or whatever. And then you just feel this weight shift off of Darrow. And then the same thing happens here where like now several is relieved by Darrow coming back and taking over. And so he's able to shed all that weight that he's been carrying um, for the, for the time that Darrow's in the box. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that helmet, that Aries helmet might've been a little yeah. too heavy for him. Maybe I think, you know, a little too big. <laughs> a little too big. A little big. You think, you think he you think it's Mohawk fits in there or does he have it like custom made? <laughs> for the it goes up the spikes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why the uh, spikes are there. <laughs> so next up, and what I like about this book, uh, as opposed to the previous two is we do hop around the solar system a little bit more. Uh, we do go more around Mars. We do go to the moon Lords a little later and things like that. The outer rim. Moody's. Which is the stuff that I, yeah that I'm excited about with the, with the sequels, but with this we get to see the South Pole of Mars to to see Ragnar's people, but of course of course Cassius and Aja have to cock block that and shoot him down, <laughs> and um, I mean this whole sequence is just like cruel to me because Pierce got me with this one. Uh, you think that Ragnar's drowned? They save him, and he's like, not yet, you know, and yeah. then a chapter later he kills him. I'm like you. Bastard! Yeah. <laughs> Lured me into that 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 feeling of safety just to do that. Uh, I mean, it's an awesome scene, mm -hmm. it really is. Again, it just shows that Aja just can't be touched, and yeah, it, it sucks. But I, I think it was really really awesome. Even though I like him, <laughs> where where uh, Cassie's is like, you ain't gonna do, <gasps> and he gets shot in the neck with an arrow uh, before yeah. he's even done with the line. <laughs> that that is so hardcore. Yeah. Just a little to the left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The part that people kind of uh, just just always forget about that that happened because of uh, Ragnar's awesome last words is just, right. I mean, it's just both times it, it got my allergies both times I think actually more this time than the first time you know I because, cry every time oh yeah, it's just it was so rough. killer it was, Pier it was, Pierce is good at dragging out the sadness so like you're like oh gut punch and then you're like it keeps hurting and then you like <laughs> the next chapter you're like now everyone's well, also sad. you see it coming too that's the word kind of like you see the car crash coming and you're like ragnar please no and you're like holding out hope that it's not going to happen and then like 
you see it from this Daryl's perspective where he's like, he knows the move is coming and he's like narrating that for us. And we're like, please don't let that happen. Please don't let that happen. And then it happens. And then you're like, did she actually get him though? And then she did. And then it's like these great, like Ragnar just gives like the best death speech of all time. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you say like, uh, we're not builders, so take your time. You yeah. Know, to come oh, to oh man. Just kills. Wrecked me. Wrecked me. This <laughs> yeah. is hard, hard stuff. <laughs> and you know, it's one of those things on a re we were like, maybe it'll be different somehow. <laughs> every single time. And every single time you're like, this is like what chapter? I don't know, 32 or yeah, something 30. like yeah, that. Yeah. 30. I know yeah. because 30, everyone yeah. on the Discord will put the chapter number and then spoiler out the text. And every yeah. one of them, chapter 30 and then there's like a the, the frog <laughs> crying emoji <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's like you got like a full book of ragnar and that's it but he feels like he had like this giant impact um, yeah you really think about it he yeah. really had a book's worth of time here yeah but man what a character he was a giant yeah <laughs> so was maybe you guys know was ragnar a hat trick or did he always plan to do this i did not hear that he was a hat person mm -mm. Mm -hmm. he just packed i think yeah because I know there is a character that I won't mention in the sequels that uh, that I was really, really intrigued by. Yes. And he said it was a hat trick on that one. Right. We'll talk about that when we talk about the... Uh, hat trick that. sounds like you scored three goals. Three goals? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems happy. Yes. But it's not happy. I think that that's bearing the lead here. Aja is an amazing villain. Mm. I mean, she mm -hmm. just... I mean, you talk Terrifying. about... I don't want to skip to the end, but at the no. end, there were, there's like three of them fighting her, and she's wiping... We're talking about Darrow... And Cassius, two of the best sword fighters there are in the series, and she's wiping the floor with them. You know, yeah. so she's just yeah. that good. And what does Lauren always say? Like, don't do this and don't fight Aja one on one or something. Don't like fight that. a river and don't fight Aja. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, so Luckily, everybody... Severa was there. <laughs> loves Ragnar. I don't think that any, I mean, really, this is one of those where people that are like, ah, I don't cry in books. Well, if you make it through this, uh, good for you, man. You've, yeah. got, you've got no Well, soul. then you're heartless, so <laughs> yeah. good luck with your life. You're not crying. Uh, don't be coming at me with facts, and we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> uh, so we get to meet, uh, what, Ragnar's sister, Sefi, and get, like, that whole, like, revolution of her, like, basically taking her place, which mm -hmm. seems like that that kind of culture, you, you, pretty much have to, you, have to, you have to kill your to kill your parent right. to become the leader, you know, kind of she thing. She was uh, not a very nice mother. <laughs> no, yeah, pretty not terrible. Very much. I did like how it terrible. showed that uh, that the golds made them believe that they were gods, and I was like, "You really, literally have two guys up there cosplaying right. as gods up on this mountain." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just I like crazy. The taking of the second Mount Olympus. Yeah. Um, and that, that was cool to see the uh, culture around the uh, walking up the steps and how. Um, the obsidians, yeah, the path of the stains or whatever, yeah. stains, path of stains, yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe for whatever reason, maybe think of that part in Thor Ragnarok where uh, where they're doing like the the the, the play and Thor like shows up and watches it. <laughs> what was it, uh, <laughs> Matt Damon and somebody else? I yeah, was. But anyways, that's what made me think of this time. Around. That's the one. I don't know, I don't know. So it was, it was, it and was, just makes Aaliyah even worse because she knew, oh, she knew all of it, yeah, yeah, she mm -hmm. had a little Bluetooth. And then she's just giving everything away. She's giving away. Yeah, no, members. selling your own yeah. people out like that. Yeah. Pretty much yeah. I mean, I did like to get to see a little bit of their culture. That was pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. How they carve all the crazy mythical creatures and shit. It's just wild. It's wild stuff. I'd love to see. I'd love to see more Obsidian stuff in the future of this series. It's just, it's just yeah. Sad. I wonder what happens after the rising. Like, do they continue on on the ice or do they all move <laughs> to warmer climates? Are there Askamani in the in the series or is that in this, is Askamani in this, the next ones? Next uh, you kind of, I think here. It, that think doesn't you, spoil it. You know, guys have no idea what Askamani is. That's not yeah. spoiling I think anything. they do get mentioned maybe in, in okay. this book, but not. But you don't see them. You understand, yeah. Uh, I got Missy when Servo told Darrow he was a son of Ares. I felt the emotional release. Maybe that was book two. I don't recall. Yeah, that was book two. That was book two. But uh, yeah, but still, I, anytime it's it, it's a, a, a heart to heart with Darrow and any one other character, usually I'm I'm pretty much into it. Like there's a big one with Cassius later that that we'll talk about. Uh, part three is called Glory, and this is where we go see the Moonies, which I'm going to use that from now on. That's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, hey, you should do a podcast. This is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I came up with Moody. So. Uh, Who uh, knows what comes out of my mouth? Daryl needs allies, basically. So we go to the outer rim, 
But uh, so does Roke, who we see Roke has become like this big Roke's badass like bitch. admiral now, right? <laughs> uh, Take care, Roke. So you're 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 not okay. Let's go ahead. I mean, how are you feeling about Roke at this point in the story? You're not you're not forgiving I'm him. I'm excited huh? for him to die. <laughs> you used to like Roke. I, I always like thought him. I've kind of gone down a long winding path with Roke. Like I I really love his character, obviously, but the more I read, um, the more I'm like. I think I've said this before on our podcast. Like, I feel like every time I read the series, I hate Roke more than I did the last time. Mm -hmm. And it's just because I'm like, just feel more betrayed by him every single time. Like my heart just becomes more like Severo's like that. He, I'm right here. He went the wrong way. Yeah. And I'm right here. He's him. a bitch. But it's definitely <laughs> hard. Yeah. yeah. I, I, he did. Sure. Yeah. He did. But Roke was someone who would never, ever accept anyone other than Golds as equals. Right, and I think that he, his, his problem was he went too long because, guys, you, what you don't realize is that Lorne would have killed the shit out of Darrow if he knew right. that he was if he knew that he was a, a red. So definitely, you know. yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah. You live long enough to become the villain. See, it is true. That's true. <laughs> no, I, okay. So I, I knew you wanted to get that out. So, but okay, now, 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 Roke is like a big hotshot admiral now, yeah. and he's there, and he basically has the the better the better terms for for the moon lord especially uh, romulus and then they bring up that uh oh yeah by the way your niece died at the gold the gold wedding is what i call the end of uh gold sun guys because you don't know she got and that, that's what kind of that what kind of sways them i'm like okay i like romulus like right away and i don't know if that yeah. if i felt that way the first time i read this because the moon lords do have bigger parts in the sequels guys but I really, really am intrigued by the Moon Lord stuff so much by this. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I love that. What couldn't get enough of it? I think like they have almost kind of like that Asian culture. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just something really, really cool about them. And this they guy also has like raise a, their children better. Right. And yeah, I love like that. I love more, it. Serafina. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah really and good. obviously they're still like have slaves and stuff, but they at least like, I don't know. They treat them in a way that is not. Well, they, they treat everyone. Poor society way. Uh, none of them are gluttonous like it's, it's right I like you all have to like earn your keep and... it was more like they had this system that i guess made sense you know for like colonizing the space system but they actually respected that and they spoke to the uh actual morals and you know like honor of being an iron gold and what that meant and like in the core is it's all that had been perverted so I think mm -hmm. that they were easier to like as gold because of that reason. Mm. They're like the old school Romans. Yeah, it was still pretty fucked up. Though, well, yeah. <laughs> and Darrow screws him up. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. All right. Yeah, uh, so it was a mix of Japanese and South African culture for the moon. Yeah, yeah, it's really rad, really rad idea, which I'm glad we get so much more of them. So, guys, if you like this little taste, you're going to like the mm -hmm. sequels, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so after a big epic space battle, you know, I mean, that's summing it up. Obviously, it's a lot more than that. And claw drills, the claw drills come back, mm -hmm. how, they, how they take Rogue's ship here. Yes. But I'm at the point where, yes, I know you're supposed to hate Rogue at this point. But I'm really, really sad this death scene. Really, yeah. because it just so many missed opportunities. I mean, I know Rogue, obviously, space racist, as we put out there. But it's it's one of those things where I always felt like, Darrow, you screwed up that relationship. You had so many times to really, really endear yourself to him, and you just kept messing it up. But again, in the end, would it have mattered? You we know? definitely know. came to that same conclusion on our podcast, like, we, we definitely, when we were doing our reread, we're like, okay, we're like, Daryl is well, everyone, messing up. Everyone Roke ever had a romantic love with <laughs> died. Yes, and, but those weren't all Darrow's fault. And people that he cared about had been, you know, lost like because of Darrow or whatever. Yeah. And, and we're like, we're seeing all of this. And obviously it's all there. But yes, I agree with you. In the end, like, that is kind of what makes it so tragic is that no matter what Darrow would have done, Roke was still going to be Roke. Right. Um, yeah, and, he still wouldn't have yeah. accepted him as a red. So yeah. And that's why I say everybody everybody loves Lauren. I'm like, just because he died too early. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> Lauren would have done the same thing. But uh, yeah, I think it, it's what like this. It's Pierce writes such great characters, guys. And even if they're the bad guys, you're still sad to see him go because they're great characters. At least that's how I feel about it. So I, it wasn't just, it, you know, the lost friendship and things like that. But it just it was a great character, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You think it was his is? time. Yeah. <laughs> I was glad that like I, I love seeing because he was getting all this shine and like he was the biggest imperator yeah. in the in the whole system and and I just loved seeing like Darrow kind of like outplay him because they knew each other really well and he knew like Rogue was gonna be looking for like specific things from him. So he used that to his advantage and I love that rope being like i'm the smartest dude ever and i know how to do everything and then he gets outsmarted by darrow and i i love that aspect of it yeah i'm with you uh, uh zen says fuck rogue like all other traders <laughs> cassius at least had some honor did the right thing in the end yeah yeah but in the moment i bet you people were cussing some cassius there right yeah. what happened, which we'll, we'll, we'll get into because i'm sure that's they're kind of two sides of the same coin like of the conversation yeah uh, the fact that Rogue's most watched video was the brothers scene at the Institute keeps mm. me from hating him completely. Good pull. Good pull. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, it was kind of wild to me that, you know, he would rather kill himself than be taken prisoner. But, you know, hey, I'm a victory. I'm a, I'm a liberty or death type myself. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yourself with a sword. Pretty awesome putting the razor around him and turn. Oh, it's first yeah. really good. You know, the razor continues to be the coolest thing ever that's not yeah. like. Because every one of these sci-fi series always, it's it's just some version of the lightsaber. Right. Like it's something that's different, you know? So, yeah, it's really, really cool. So, uh, uh, Darrow makes the choice to blow up the shipyards of Ganymede. Mm. And the reason I bring this up, guys, is <laughs> huge plot point going forward. This is one of those things where, like, was was this planned to be a trilogy? Because there's certainly so many things that yeah. feel like he was setting up. He was able to those trap doors in case he decided yes, to go on, I definitely. think. And using the, okay, well, hey, this is, they can't, so they can't just attack us, you know, say we win this. You know, we don't want to leave them too powerful so they can just come and, you know, kick our ass after we're all depleted. Mm -hmm. I get it as a tactical move. It's one of those numbers games where you're killing a lot of your own people too. Yeah. And, you know, it's, he feels like it's the opportunity to blame it on rope before he, you know, before they took over the ship. So I, I get it as a tactical move, but it's one of those, I'm like, Darrow's fucking up, you know, and I will say that a lot going yeah. forward in this series, but this is one of those, and I, God bless he Victor. He chose violence. He is yeah. definitely not perfect, and that's Hey, God bless Victor, it. though. What Victor yeah. says, share the load, darling, and she yeah, does it, you know, because Victor's line. metal like that. And she yeah. always has his back. And by the way, by Felicia, the best use of breaking the fourth wall of her life. She's so good. I am Felicia. By Felicia. I'm so I, I hate him, though. People <laughs> either really, really love it or yeah, not. Yeah, I think it's I, kind I, of like, I, I was like, really okay. That, and when I, when it first came out, it was like, that's when by Felicia was like everywhere. So it's just yeah. like, it's when you're like yeah, over uh, anything. There, that's there's viral. a line we'll talk about. We talk about Iron Gold. There's a line that he uses in Iron Gold. I'm like, well, he was watching Game of Thrones. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like that Those does happen. A lot of those. And that's why a... I said, if I was a writer, I could not be watching or reading anything yeah. because it would influence me way, way too much. He likes a, a good pop culture callback. There's definitely a Don't Tell Me the Odds call out in Golden mm -hmm. Sun. Uh, which is a Han Solo line. There's a little big Lebowski in Iron Gold uh, that I will not spoil, but it's there. I, I love that he does wear his influences on his sleeve. I don't yeah. have any problem with that. Like, uh, don't think I'd say anything. But there's a character in one of the sequels who uses an alias of Mr. Garibaldi, which was the security chief on Babylon 5, the TV <laughs> show. And I'm like, of course, Pierce had to watch that show. You know? <laughs> but little things like that I love. Yeah. I love. But I, I can see if by Felicia didn't work for you. I can yeah. see that for sure. You know, so hey. Uh, so part four. This one's called Stars. The last part here. So Darrow and Cassius have a heart to heart. And I've said constantly that I feel like the best parts of the series is when it's one on one conversations. And I feel like Darrow does in this part where he's saying, like, even after all this, I want his respect so bad. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I always felt like there was just like a lost brotherhood there that you guys can work it out. Not right. like in a, not like in a, a, a rogue in Darrow way. Cause that ship had sailed. But this one, even at this point, even here, I'm still like, you guys can work this out. I feel like you can, I feel like Cassius wants to change and Darrow's willing to bend, but not break. I guess you'd say there. I don't think that yeah. Darrow's ever the types like, yeah, I could change. I no, I don't think so. Not at all. But I don't know. How'd you guys feel about this scene? Uh, well, this is my favorite scene in the, probably in the whole book. You um, love Cassius. Me too. True, but I like this brotherhood as well. And like, that's mm -hmm. what, what is so appealing to me about it. And the fact that Daryl's willing to try, Cassius is willing to listen. And then we can just have this conversation where it's just like actually two uh, human beings talking to each other. And they've kind of put both of their honor aside and they're really just having a heart to heart. Um, yeah, I, I love that. 
um, really great. And then Pierce has like these little nuggets in there that uh, start to pull on your heartstrings. And then also a little bit of mystery as to like what Darrow actually showed him. Mm -hmm. And so that mm -hmm. kind of leaves you intrigued for the rest of the way. So yeah. And Cassius to me has always been like who Darrow would have been. He, that's the path Darrow would have walked if Darrow was actually a goal. Like, and they're kind of like on the same path, except Darrow has the secret agenda. Right. So they were destined to be <laughs> mortal enemies or best friends. So we'll right. so are, are you are you saying Ben that you ship Cassius and Darrow? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I just I, I love them as friends. So, um, okay. yeah. but yeah, I mean they. I, I just love, like, it just shows you kind of the difference between Cassius and Roke. Just, like, Roke's not willing to have that conversation, and um, it's there, It's about different things for them. Like, Roke, it was, like, the, the society was the most important thing, and, like, upholding the society and what it stood for. Cassius was more about his family and, like, his honor and what is the honorable thing to do, and, like, the society he could take or leave. So, I think ultimately that explains both of their choices and like why they made the choices that they did. Mm -hmm. um, and just the fact that Cassius could like Daryl could have that conversation with Cassius and they can see eye to eye for a second, I think is something that um, I love about him. That's why he's one of my favorite characters for sure. And here's where my topsy turvy emotions go crazy. Cause I'm like, yes, we're going to flip Cassius. He's going to yeah. come on to our side. <laughs> I want to bring this up that, uh, yeah, this is another key point, guys. He uh, Darrow does also give up the Sons of Ares that are in the Outer Realm, and that's mm -hmm. a huge plot point in the sequels mm -hmm. as well. So there's like five or six things I feel like he plants the seeds for the sequels here that come back up, and I don't feel like it was him going through and mining what he wrote. I feel like he had a plan, like I said, trap doors in case he did decide. Because I don't know when he released this if he had planned already that he was going to write sequels. I mean, as far as I know, I don't think so. I think he has yeah. like plans on plans on plans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, when this, this book came out, by the way, number one on New York Times bestseller, that might have been when he said, hmm, maybe I'm not done yet. You know? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows? It definitely feels like uh, he, he, uh, he had a plan. But there are a lot of tidbits uh, yeah. in this. Everyone book, loves the, sure. the Darrow and Cassius scene heart to heart over drinks. What's, what's better? What's better? Mm -hmm. And Madison likes wolves. Uh, <laughs> yes howler love yeah cassius gray well i agree with that cassius is i'm I'm with ben that's one of my favorite characters in the entire series so yeah, yeah. Fuck but yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i i think he, he goes about it in, in quite a several way but going out of his way to prove he's capable of letting it go with cassius that's a that's an interesting scene where he's, he's willing to hang himself which i'm mm -hmm. like what are you doing dude and you know what the thing is is i thought oh my god He's doing exactly what he did with Ragnar. Oh, you think Cerebro is going to die, but he doesn't die. And then two chapters later, he gets shot. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> this one, but I was so, I was, I was so mad yeah. at everyone with this. Uh, with the, just basically Cerebro in the last part here. I know we're going to have lots of hot opinions about it. But before we get to that, I yeah. want to say something happy. Cerebro and Victory get married. Yay, yeah. Yeah. Huh? I wanted to say Cerebro hanging himself, that whole scene. That was another tearjerker. Yeah. And that's that's really where Severo, I think, takes ownership of his role as Ares and yeah. as yeah. the leader. He was leader. the only yeah. one that was like capable of doing that specific thing. <laughs> and the whole time you're like, what the hell are you doing, Severo? And then he does it, and you're like, wow, that was incredible. Yeah. I'm one of those people like, look, yeah. I'm I'm so petty, like I wouldn't forgive like my friend for hitting on my girlfriend. Right. And he's willing to let go of a uh, ex friend killing his dad. So I'm like, okay, yeah. Severo might be this tall, but he's a much bigger man than I am. <laughs> exactly. You know? Not so, just uh, let go, yeah. but risk dying if yeah. you know Seffy didn't cut him down. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. like rolling her eyes, like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> that whole uprising was kind of wild there that was yeah. going on there for a minute. But that's just that's the thing with these books, guys. It's like don't blink because something's yeah. gonna go to shit uh, eventually. And, and I think if there's any criticism, uh, I, I think that a lot of people felt like this this last act was just like, holy shit, what's going on, you know? And yeah, sure. I think it's on a reread, you catch things you didn't catch before. But I mean, we gotta talk about the big one here. Okay, now, do you feel like this is the part where the gotchas go too far? I already know Aaron said yes. Last <laughs> time, this is this where you feel like the gotchas go too, too far? Because yes. if I recall correctly, I, I read it super slow this time. I was gonna say, we parsed it pretty closely well, as well. When yeah. I first read it, I was like, what the fuck? And then I yeah. was like, he did that on purpose. Yeah. Like Darrow had tricky inner thoughts 
That doesn't make any sense. There was one point, or like one sentence that we kind of came upon during our reread uh, for the podcast series where we were like, this was maybe something that was line. like misleading. Yeah. And it was about Daryl, like how emotional he was in the moment. In the box, yeah. like, yeah, with Severo's like blood or yeah. like, oh, my this friend. Like... And it's like, you know that he's not dead though. <laughs> yeah. There was some of yeah. that where it was like a little tricky, but there's nothing like explicitly. Yeah, we combed over it quite tricky, a bit because I felt I felt yeah. bamboozled. <laughs> I've had a lot of people tell me they feel like that's the part where it goes too far for them because yeah. he says that Darrow is mourning his friend in his head, you know. Yes. And I, yes. again, this is why first person narrative doesn't work for me when it, you're trying to trick your audience. Yeah, but it didn't bother me as much as everyone else. I think it might just be because I'm like, look, when I'm reading it the first time, I'm like. You do whatever Deus Ex Machina got to do. You better get Severo back, goddammit. That's where yeah. I was at in the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, there so is I, a little bit of, like, there is a little bit of setup for they were up to something because they do talk to, like, yeah. Mickey, and um, he's, like, clearly, like, working on something, but it's only, like, a couple lines. Mm -hmm. But there is, like, a little bit of a hint prior to the death, or, well, the quote-unquote death, uh, yeah. that that would lead you to believe like maybe you should be, you know, your ears should be pricked up a little bit. But I'm glad that he was only dead. It definitely didn't bother me as much. I was like, I remember I was being pissed just because I was like, Cassius, what the hell? <laughs> like I thought we, I, I thought we figured people, this out, but I definitely um, thought Severo was dead. It got me like. A lot of people stop reading and you're yeah. like, okay, keep reading. <laughs> like, I feel like there's a Reddit post on, uh, the Red Rising Reddit, like every other day, with somebody that's just read this part. Like, I'm done. Story. I'm not reading anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I told you guys that, uh, not on the air, but uh, when my wife was reading this for the first time, and I knew she was coming to that chapter, I seriously was like a creeper. I was sitting on the top of the stairs like this, watching <laughs> her read it to see her react, because, you know, Sabro is her favorite. So when I was seeing that and just seeing her be like, you know, while it was going on, I was like, hee, hee. You know, it's one of those things like, hee. I did this with uh, when Game of Thrones came because I'm a big, big reader of those books. And obviously I was miserable I mean, when I read those deaths mm -hmm. in the books, but I had such a blast watching everybody who would only watch a TV show. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. but it was kind of the same thing with that. But uh, I like this here. What Clayton says, Severo hanging himself as a parallel to Darrow having himself whipped in book mm. one. He defused the sure. situation and kept both with them. See? So Severo Hi, has a lot more growth than just fart jokes. He does. <laughs> I think so. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's great stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, Cassius uh, killing the shit out of him. I was like, well, this is, uh, I was with you, but I was like, I thought, I thought we worked this out. I know. You know <laughs> I, I, I was ready to love again. And, I was you know, so disappointed. And then Antonia, I mean, that, that could have oh, gone yeah. way wrong. She oh, could have like cut his head off or something, yes. you know. And then the fact yeah, that the, Antonia's there like sneering and at everything. Victor like beats her face in. That's yeah. metal. Yeah. I, I, I do think it's kind of, it's, it's kind of both revolting and sweet that Adrian's is still like, oh, you're perfect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when her face is all like mutilated, <laughs> yeah. I'm like that sicko probably believes it. But uh, yeah, this 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 whole last act is just kind of chaos. And I say, if I had any criticism, it would just be that like, okay, I'm I'm waiting for like the last act to kind of kick in, and then it's just like, hey, we're gonna go visit Cassie. So I said, boom, there, we're, we're we're there. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it because the pacing of these books, you're 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 used to it. I feel like at this point, mm -hmm. but this whole thing, I mean, look, he tricked me. He did. He did. It might not have been fair. But he tricked me. I was like, he's had no problem killing off characters in this series. Why would he not yeah. kill off one of the most popular ones? He's not killing off the main character. He can kill off the yeah. main character's best friend and get away with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I I yeah. still, I, I have a bet going with one of my friends that got me to read this series. I'm like, if Darrow makes it through this series, I'll be shocked. There, yeah. that's all. <laughs> What's up with this? I, I don't know. I think it's just because the resolution was so satisfying. I feel like I look past the wards a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I mean, it's a yeah, it's a little tricky, I would say, but I mean, in the end, like I think it gets us to a great place, and the payoff is worth it. So, um, Fuck. so for me, yeah, that's fine. That's no, yeah, and I would also just to comment on like the end of this book. It's so unexpected. Like you expect, I guess, a confrontation between like obviously like Jackal and Darrow and the Sovereign, but how they got there, like that whole aspect here, I was expecting like a big battle, but I could see like we were running out of pages. So I was like, how are we going to get there? But this was pretty interesting how he did that. Yeah. Yeah. So this book is, is packed full and I still feel like it could have been another hundred pages for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 
Uh, so, I mean, I just, again, I got to talk about this where the final showdown and they, 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 three of them team up to fight Aja and she's mm. just wiping the floor with them and they basically have to revive Severo just, <laughs> just yeah. so they can get one more person that can actually get her. <laughs> awesome. Devro stabs the sovereign after her big crazy speech. Uh, it's just, it's all this stuff just kind of happens just like so fast, a mile a minute. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's so good, I think. I mean, all this stuff is just those, awesome. Those lower gut stab wounds, those are. Pretty nasty. nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Lysander's there. Poor, poor baby Lysander. <laughs> yeah. He's actually like helping them out kind of <laughs> by the end. Yeah. <laughs> she is a sovereign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lysander's a character that I think you guys might have opinions about as we move forward. Series, obviously. He's but I decided to, let, decided to let Cassius take Lysander as a, as a ward. I'm like, mm. bad plan. Look, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not a baby killer. I'm just saying, you know what? If you fire them out into space, you're not killing them. The vacuum is. That's it. That's it. I'm Where's just saying that's what I think. I just you're 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 leaving it open for potential disaster. You know because uh, who knows? You know maybe one day Cassius changes his mind. It's like you know what? Fuck them. Hey, yeah. I'm gonna take Lysander. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just Pierce has maybe me Lysander turns mode. into a dick. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible. <laughs> so uh, we don't get a big epic fight, but but Dara does rip Jackal's tongue out. That's pretty metal, right? Yes. Yeah. Fine. And you're like, that is like the biggest cheer. You're like, uh, they're going to blow up the moon. Don't kill him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I didn't kill him. Uh, did you think it happened just really fast that, that Virginia becomes the new sovereign? Was that like really yes, quick? This is definitely what? a part that we've talked about where she just like walks out of there with the head and and bend the knee, stopped, bitches. Yeah, yeah. Stop shooting. What do you and, think happened to those those few that didn't bend the knee? What do you think? Do you think they got fired out the airlock or what? They get spaced? Had to have. I think Lysander is standing beside her, and the rest of the crew. Cassius gives yeah. her a legitimate. He does scene. a little hand waving with the writing, where it's like these people like respect the power in the office, and so she if she has the symbols, then they will respect her. So. And they're looking at these people like, well, we don't want to die. Right. So, sure. We'll bend okay. the knee for but, now. But is is Lysander Legion? Is this actually a thing? Is this a fact that's out there? <laughs> oh, my I'm God. Because, uh, I mean, I, I don't Get know. Get out of here. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> we don't need uh, your kind. <laughs> you guys read Stormlight Archive, but there is this, a really detestable character. And there's a people that have this group called Moash Did No Wrong. And I'm like, you guys are <laughs> they're out there they're always out there we, know, I read, we definitely I read know Stormlight. some lysander sympathizers for sure yeah we know them but we're not friends with them <laughs> yeah so afterwards darrow and virginia they retreat to earth and she reveals their son pax uh so uh, very baby. very happy ending On uh, beach. and again i think it might just be because i know what's to come in the series it feels like right. wow i feel like this is the ha- the last happy moment in this series it feels like to me i mean there's yes. <laughs> there's other victories and stuff but this feels like the last like blissful moment for me this was and, surprising i felt like for, for like a pierce brown book to end like this kind happily. Of disney ending? so it yeah. makes sense yeah with the disney ending and i was like huh okay um i'm not like a big happy like aaron is a big happy ending fan so she was very very excited about that but uh and it just didn't quite fit i guess and yeah. so it's not surprising yeah. that he wanted to keep the series going i don't know, i feel like like i said i feel like he is using the star Wars method you know yeah. empire strikes right. back and now return of the jedi you got to have that happy ending but when you throw a baby into it it's like oh well man come on <laughs> yeah. we've had a, a lot about of a baby? debates about the um genetics because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of tidbits in the book about how like you know don't gold go spoiler territory no whoa but, like, whoa, whoa, gold... whoa wait 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 wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. cassius is the dad is that what no, you're talking no, about no, 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 but like i've gold, never heard that one. Like, no we're not <laughs> you know they she just wants to know if he's like pure gold or dusty red and gold. He's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. he's a yeah. he's a uh rose gold yeah is that what what, what happens when you mix Gold and red together. What color does it make? Rose gold. Rose gold. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was just an iPhone thing. It was more was about whether up. like Darrow has the DNA of a red or the DNA of a gold. Yeah. Yeah. Can you carve DNA? Hmm. And there's, I, mean, I guess if his hair grows that gold. Up, saying yeah. like, yeah. you know, uh, Severo's daddy had to have she had to have her womb like modified in order to have a child. Like they're not supposed to breed. Across colors. Well, so. I mean, doesn't that make doesn't that make several the same thing? 
Well, no, he saying. didn't. Yeah, but they. <laughs> yeah, they could. I mean, because he's Dustin. I feel like it's like me saying, look, look, like my ancestry is Irish, but I'm a total mutt by this point. Right. You know, so can I really call myself Irish anymore? You know, so. Only uh, on St. Patty's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, here we go. We are at the end. And here's the thing that I've been encountering a lot. And now I'd always heard people saying they hadn't read the sequels because they were waiting for them to be done. They were waiting for them to be done sure. before mm -hmm. they read them. And I respected That's that. Valid. I respect that. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to worry. But then I've heard recently a lot of people while doing this saying that they didn't read after this because they liked where it ended. Yeah. And to me, I'm like, I, the story's not done. It, to me, what that said, it said you watch Star Wars A New Hope and you said, I like how that ended. I'm not going to watch, you know, the other stuff. And I'm like, so you're skipping The Empire Strikes Back. Sorry to keep coming back to Star Wars. I just, I'm just a big <laughs> Star Wars fan, so I'm just going to yeah, assume this sure. what it was. I want you guys to tell our audience why they shouldn't be pick, Pixies and they should read the Red Rising sequels. Well, I, I think waiting till they're finished, that's a very valid... Exactly. I'll accept that one. ...path, because, you know, a lot of times the books are so paced out, you have to reread them anyways. Um, so I I think it's hard. It'll be hard to argue for people to read it until they're finished, because <laughs> we don't know what heartbreak is to come. Mm. I disagree. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, here's, like gets way better as a writer as the series goes on. Also, like, the multi-perspective of the um, next two sequel books are is fantastic. Some of my, my all-time favorite characters um, get their own perspectives. And then new characters coming in, and they show a fresh perspective on the world that you've never gotten before. Like, the scope just expands even more massively. Like, think about Red Rising to Golden Sun. It's like that plus more i feel like yeah or, or how much the 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 scope expands and just like so much cool new shit you get all these new toys to play with in the series like and new favorite characters i mean yeah new bad guys that we love incredible bad guys i mean it's just yeah i i i love the sequel series like those those books are like an evolution to me of mm -hmm. of the first series so um and they get longer right more yeah. oh much more, longer more, more, much longer. more time to read and you just learn what more about doing? this giant uh, like the world building gets even bigger it's just it's like i don't know i think it's an easy decision uh, it's a good sell good job yeah, yeah uh dominus brazel sorry i wasn't ignoring your messages i just i just missed them sometimes keep dropping the <laughs> knowledge bombs my friend uh with me in the sequels is I went into Iron Gold feeling like, ah, this kind of feels like a cash grab. And I could not put it down. Like, immediately, yeah. I was just wrapped into it because it was, it finally takes a breath. I feel like it, it's the point where it feels familiar, but it feels fresh. Mm -hmm. And it, he changed some things up. He gets a lot more into the in-world politics and things like that, which I really, mm -hmm. really appreciated. And I've always loved this idea of, ah, uh, you remember how when you were... 18 you thought if you were running the world it'd be a better place yeah how'd that yes. work out for you yeah. and i love that 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 fine line between at, at what point did we replace one tyrant with another kind of thing you yeah. know because you see so many things there you're like are things better are they you know yeah. you ask those questions a lot i think that that's just real life you get jaded as you get older and our characters are going to be in their 30s now mm -hmm. and you see they're much more weary and battle tested yeah. and stuff to where they're just like beaten down a little bit and i love that i mean a lot of people aren't going to be into it because the books do get way more grimdark going forward. Way yeah. more grimdark. <laughs> dark and I don't just mean just in the con. I mean, the way that he describes stuff. He gets a lot yeah. more explicit. Uh, a lot more crazy things happen. But I love that it feels more grown up. It feels more big because you go all around the universe. and yeah. oh, Sorry, the solar system, not the universe. Yeah. You go all around the solar system. Like I said, you spend a lot of time out there in the outer rim. I love all of that stuff mm -hmm. out there on the on the moons. So good. So good. So, I mean, yeah. if you're into that stuff, I think you'll like it. And there's so many new characters that have relations, relationships with those previous characters you've seen in the series. And some that you will be expecting, some you will be completely blown away being like, oh, I forgot all about that character. But I, I'm with Ben and saying like, like how the, the evolution between Red Rising and, uh, and Golden Sun was. Same with this. I feel like yeah. he's a better writer. You may not like the content as much as some of the stuff in here, but I, I think you're going to like it if you just give it a chance. Because I know a lot of people just won't even give it a chance because they, yeah. they hear how it's darker. And look, I'm be honest, dark age. Not, what are they dark reading? Dark is not a clever name. It really is dark. <laughs> yeah. it really is. But it, the it, next book, Nightbringer. I mean, it seems uh, like it's from that. Dark, yeah. 
Hey. So maybe we'll we'll get. And they do uh, they do get longer. That's that's the thing, thing is a lot of people that are like oh I I like a lot of fantasy readers they they start yeah. reading it's like this is just too fast for me. I wish you would just slow down. I feel like he does that finally. He takes the he puts the pedal. He puts the breakdown a little bit sometimes and needs mm -hmm. to kind of expand some things. And I feel like there's a lot of Song of Ice and Fire and influence and a lot yeah. of stuff with the Moon Lord, especially House Raw. I think that that yeah. whole plot line to me is full on George R. R. Martin yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's on par, which is one of my favorite writers ever. So if you really are into that kind of stuff, I think you'll absolutely love yeah, it. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, my, my favorite moments of the entire series are in those two books. Like, yeah. and a lot of them happen in Iron Gold, which is crazy how much criticism that book gets. But, um, but I would agree with you. Like, one thing you said about questioning, you know, what happens after, um, after that mean? to me, yeah, that to me feels so Pierce Brown. And that's why the ending of Morningstar didn't quite fit but the fact that we had the sequel series 10 years later where we're questioning and we're looking back on like what happened after the happy ending what actually happens when these people have to rule like it's not as easy as you know you think it's going to be it's not happily ever after and so that to me is what pierce brown is about as a writer and why that's so great i think the only kind of thing that i could see as a criticism or a difficulty for getting into iron gold is the perspective shift like if you're yeah. very much into darrow and like you just want to read darrow's story like i could see how that would be frustrating for you that you have to go to these different perspectives and they're not all like your favorite people sometimes um and to that i'd say uh if you have a choice you should read it first and not listen first yeah. especially to iron gold yeah, especially also if you're really into the audiobooks. Oh, the you mean the which, audiobook? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. Only, eyes only. So I know I've heard a lot of the complaints about the yeah. the, the Lyria narrator. I've heard a lot of complaints about yeah. that. Just speed it up a little bit. You'll Lysander's like narrator is kind of tough, too, I feel like, in that first book. Yeah. He got better in the second one. I think it's a different guy in the second one, but it is. Yeah. It's just like very flat. and. Yeah. So yeah. the Dark Age, they switch out Lyria and Lysander to um, different narrators who. We, we like more. Yeah. We, the collective we. Oh, so at least, they, at least yeah. they listen to the problem then and fix yeah. it. Sure. I can see how that would be jarring, but I would say, you know, keep going because the more you get to know the, those characters, the more you'll love them. Yeah. And every time I go back and read Iron Gold, I'm just like, this book is awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really is. But uh, yeah, what he's saying here, I like getting to see what people think of Darrow yes. and Mustang, people like yeah. that. So getting that multi POV was something I was on board with immediately. I wanted that so, so much. And, and the thing is like a lot of people go into this are like, okay, uh, you get two new POV characters. I'm like, well, I don't know these characters. These aren't my characters. Give me yeah. my characters. And they never give Lyria or Ephraim a chance. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's Pierce Brown guys. He's a great character writer. He'll get you there. Yeah, Just exactly. wait. be patient. And I know it's weird telling people to be patient with the Red Rising, but because usually it's like, well, slow down, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it's really exciting. It's really exciting. I already finished. I've already finished my reread of Iron Gold. I read it nice. in three days, guys. It's it's that good. It's just it's it's it so is. So we'll meet here tomorrow. Or? <laughs> <laughs> but I've already got that question. Uh, I mean, uh, we'll be doing it sometime in April, I believe. Uh, you know, just depending on schedules, work together, but. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have that that month break before Lightbringer. You know, doing these as a regular schedule. So we've we've got we've got time for wiggle room. We're sure, we're pretty sure. close now. Mm, have you guys heard uh, anything about review copies yet? Or no, we have not. Because no. I've inquired three times, and I think it's important <laughs> at this point. But I, I feel like when when Pierce posts a picture of the proof, that's when I'm gonna full on just like become obnoxious about it. <laughs> because look, uh, I, I feel like I can get. So many reading copies of books I'm, I'm not going to read right now. I, I want to get one for one that I'm you know, most anxious for. So nice. uh, I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully I'll be done with my reread by then. I don't know. Maybe if I start Dark Age by now, right now, you know, because that is. <laughs> yeah. That is a heavy, but like uh, I'm reading beast, Lonesome yeah. Dove later, later, uh, oh, in, wow. later here pretty soon. Like the same month I'm going to be reading Dark Age. And I'm like, well, that's going to be the whole month. Lonesome Dove and Dark Age. It's just going to be pretty much the whole month. But it is still Pierce Brown, guys. You still can't read it fast. But mm -hmm. um there are some parts in Dark Age. I feel like maybe I like this part better on a reread because oh, I don't want to get too too into it. <laughs> yeah. There is there is parts in it where I was like, okay, this might be the first time I feel like the series might be slowing down. But I do think it's a good thing in hindsight, and I'm yeah. excited to reread it for sure. But 
that's a that's a that's what I got, guys. That's what All we right. got. Uh, so very very exciting. Uh, are you guys going to uh, reread any of this stuff before before Lightbringer? Or you guys just feel like oh, you read I'm, enough of the time? I think it? I'll reread Dark Age for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. And there's so much, I'm like I don't know if I remember all of it, but I've reread the other four so many times I probably will. Hmm. Maybe yeah. Iron Gold. I'll read Iron Gold and Dark Age for sure. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, I can't wait to do it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me again. Thanks, Mike. Yes. I, 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 this is this is the highlight uh, of the reread for me. I feel like this way too fast. There's so much more in morning <laughs> that I don't want to talk about. There is. Like, there wait, is. go back. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, uh, I feel like uh, we'll, we'll have that that bonus episode. You know, before before uh, before Library comes yeah. out, where we can just you know, talk great. about everything we love. You know, that'd nice. be a lot more fun. We'll just, we'll just do that. So, all right, guys, you That's can great. find them on iTunes, Spotify, all those good things. Howler Pod. Uh, they have like 400 episodes. Go back and listen to them. But only if you've read. Only if you've read the whole series, though, because they are they are a, they are a great reread. Uh, let's put it that yes. way. You, you guys don't want to get spoiled. But uh, I do I do recommend it. And I can't wait for them to have new episodes again because they don't have any new episodes. I've got their only new episodes for a while right now. Coming I'm soon. Very excited. Coming soon. <laughs> can't wait to do it. So, uh, all right. Well, thank you guys for joining me, and thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll talk to you probably in a few weeks. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Here we go. Got it.